Hi, I'm Mary Ann of Give Cheese a Chance, where I encourage you to make cheese at home because it's fun. And what I want to show you today is definitely cheese fun because it's a comparison of several homemade Swiss style cheeses. I'm comparing various Swiss cheese recipes so I can determine which recipe results in a cheese that people like the most, which recipe makes the best tasting Swiss cheese. So this Swiss cheese tasting has a little scientific experiment element added to it. It's a social and a culinary adventure that has a question, and that question is, which recipe meant for home cheese making makes the best tasting Swiss cheese? Swiss cheese is really an umbrella term for Alpine cheeses from the Swiss region, and they can be quite different from each other. So what I'm talking about here today when I say Swiss cheese, it is a general overarching term used when talking about cheese like Emmental or Gruyere, which are like sibling cheeses in the same family. These cheeses are typically hard and are made using cow's milk, and they're aged for several months, two years. Emmental is known for having large holes of various sizes, while Gruyere typically has smaller holes. These holes are sometimes referred to as eyes. And here is a fun fact. If you're trying to make an Emmental at home, but the resulting cheese doesn't have those eyes, then that cheese is said to be blind. No eyes. And please don't worry if a Swiss style cheese that you make at home doesn't have large holes or any eyes at all. It's virtually impossible for a home cheese maker to make an Emmental or a Gruyere the same as what is imported from Switzerland. Their Swiss cheeses are usually made in giant wheels, 100 to 200 pounds each, which are about 45 to 90 kilograms. They're massive cheeses. So if a home cheese maker wants to make a Swiss style cheese, they have to settle for making a miniature version. And that is what I'm going to show you today. I have followed several different recipes to create four different miniature Swiss cheeses so I can determine which one tastes the best. In fact, there is also a bonus cheese, a fifth mini Swiss cheese that I'm throwing into this comparison too. So let's take a look at all of the Swiss cheeses that I made. Here is mini Swiss number one. It is four months old. This is mini Swiss number two, and it is also four months old. Now this one is cheese number three. It's three and a half months old. And this one by far is the smelliest cheese in the room. It is easily smellier than all of the other cheeses. And I can tell you that a lot of people do not like this smell. It smells a little bit like feet. I'm curious to see how this cheese is going to rate compared to the others. And get ready for the next one because the next cheese looks totally different than all the others. This is mini Swiss number four. Yep, this one came out looking quite different on the outside. It doesn't look very appetizing, does it? But we're going to give it a chance. If there's something I have learned about cheese, it is that some of the weirdest looking cheeses can taste the best. And some of the most beautiful cheeses can have very little flavor. So I'm not going to prejudge this cheese by thinking that it looks unusual on the outside, therefore it must taste bad on the inside. We're gonna give all these cheeses a chance to be judged based on their flavor. And the judges are not going to be seeing the rinds of these cheeses. As I promised earlier, there is a bonus cheese, cheese number five. I made this Swiss style cheese over two years and five months ago, and it has been in my cheese cave all of this time. I'm throwing it into this taste test because maybe a two year aging period will have a huge difference in the flavor. Maybe it will be voted as the best tasting of them all. They really are different, aren't they? Different Alpine cheeses can have vastly different surface treatments as the cheeses mature, making the rinds look different than each other. Their rinds can be washed to give them an orange pinky color. They can be brushed. 
They can be oiled or even coated in wax. Well, soon the judges will come over to taste test all of these cheeses. So it's now time to cut into them and make little samples for each person to taste. Let's cut into this one. That's number one. Let's cut into cheese number two. This one looks very similar to cheese number one. There are some nice holes there. Let's cut into cheese number three, <laughs> the smelliest cheese. Whew, that is quite aromatic. There is cheese number three on the inside. Some smaller holes, but still looks nice. And while I'm cutting into these cheeses, I'm going to ask you to please subscribe to this channel, hit that like button, and leave a comment. Your feedback really encourages me to make more cheese videos in the future. And if you want to help me even further, consider becoming a Patreon member. A few dollars can help me buy the milk and supplies needed to fine tune a new cheese recipe to feature in an upcoming video. It smells actually really good. So let's cut into this cheese, cheese number four, which looks a little wobbly, but uh, it sounds like there's some big holes in there just because it feels a little lighter than it should. It sounds like it's a little hollow. Let's, uh, let's cut into it. Whoa, this is not what I expected. Well, this cheese does not look very good on the inside and maybe that's why <laughs> the outside looked so weird. Definitely some large holes. I'm not happy with that. We're gonna put it aside. It doesn't smell bad. I'm not sure how I feel about this one. And last but not least, here is the fifth cheese, which is two years and five months old. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. I didn't think it would be this hard to cut. Come on now. There we go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was pretty interesting. I remember I made an Emmental years ago that I forgot about and left it in my fridge for months and months. And I tasted it, and although it had dried out, it was still delicious. So I'm hoping that's the case for this cheese, too. Okay. There we go. It looks well-aged. Look at that. I might have to take a little taste. It's good. And because this cheese is over two years old, it is crumblier than the other ones. So that's an interesting texture difference. Hang on a minute. Let's back up. I've now had a few minutes to sit with these cheeses and I have concerns about cheese number four. It obviously has problems. This recipe was not successful in this case, and therefore I'm going to pull this cheese out of the lineup. However, let's make this a learning moment. Let's figure out what went wrong with this cheese. To find out, I contacted a cheese expert friend of mine who lives in Mexico. His name is Armando Cruz Ramirez, and he is a professional lactologist. He's been working in the cheese industry for over 20 years. So I showed him this cheese because I've never had this happen to me before. And I asked him what happened here. And this is what he said. Cheese number four has butyric acid bacteria fermentation causing late blow. These bacteria can resist pasteurization and after several days will spoil the cheese by producing big 
abnormal irregular holes. So it's likely been contaminated by butyric acid bacteria, which gives an unpleasant flavor and odor. He says it is safe to eat, but it may have an unpleasant flavor. And then I asked Armando, where did this contamination come from? And he said, it came from a bacteria called Clostridium, which is one of the most common bacteria that spoils cheese. Clostridium bacteria comes from silage. The cows eat the silage when there's no grass available to eat. This bacteria lives in the silage, but only in some seasons, not throughout the entire year. This bacteria ends up in the cow's milk and it resists the pasteurization process by forming a shell around it. However, when the bacteria feels that it is in a warm, moist, sugar-rich environment, it comes out of its shell and it starts to eat the sugar in the cheese. And this happens at about the four week mark. So isn't that interesting? This cheese's contamination was likely from the milk itself. Either way, I've decided to remove this cheese from the competition. The judges will not be trying this cheese at all. They will try cheeses one, two, three, and five only. And here are what the judges had to say about those cheeses. This is good. It's fruity. Smoky. Fruity, a bit. Not, uh, it's not like a firm. gruyere. It's like a gruyere. Not too firm. It's perfect. I'll say more, real seeds with gruyere, but I say it's more uh, of a fondue type of, uh, of aroma. I, I, I smell it. I smell the Swiss gruyere. Yeah. Mm. I love the flavor. That's number five. Yeah. Yeah. I, a, I like like stronger cheeses, like older cheeses. But I like with number one. I like number two more than number one. What do you think? Number three is the best smelling one. I think overall, number three was my favorite. Number three, I would eat that with wine. I would have that and wine. But I'm I'm a fan of five. I'm not sure entirely why, but it's just good. The second one is almost a little bit smoky. This chunk, so that I get Ooh. a bigger chunk. Mmm. That's not nice. That's like fruity. Yeah. I thought it was gonna be like one of those Parmesan Reggiano, whatever the really hard ones, but it's different. I just know this one's definitely my favorite. Mmm. Actually. Oh my good. gosh, yeah. That one's insane. That one's very good. This one is actually a solid 15. I very much still like that one. It smells so good. <laughs> Tastes like wine? Vaguely. Which one? Number three? Number three. It is the perfect pair for um, a bolder red wine. That would be really, really, really good. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. Mm. Yeah, number three with a little crisp cracker because it's softer. And then on a nice crisp cracker with a bold wine would be really good. Okay. I'll try number two. Okay. The three. Well, number one's pretty good. Mmm. I love this one. A little bit. Yeah, it's pretty good. Oh, oh my god. Sorry, Jesus. Marianne. Oh gosh. Mmm. I love that. Number five. That number five, Very you smooth. could eat it just on its own. Mm -hmm. On the side. It's really delicious. I would buy that. Yeah. Let me ask you, which cheese did you find tasted the best? The number three. The number three is the closest to the real gruyere. Okay. So it has this bit fruity. Um, what did I say? Also, it tastes more like a fondue. It reminds me when I do, I do my a own fondue. fondue at home, and I use a lot of gruyere, and it's it smells the closest to the fondue. So that's what I came with. If I have to choose, for me, it's, it's the closest to the to the real gruyere cheese. Yeah, they're really good. This is a success. It is a success, big success. Oh yeah, uh, this one I would buy it. I like, very nice, I would sell them. <laughs> so which cheese was your favorite? Let's start with you, Steve. Oh, my absolute favorite is number five. Absolute favorite, I love and, it. And why is that? I just love the flavor. Number three was my favorite. Okay. 
And then and followed by number five. Okay, Tim, which one was your favorite? My favorite was number three as well. And why is that? Um, I like stronger cheeses. Okay. I'm surprised this is all, this could have been store-bought. There's no reason that this was homemade. I wouldn't have known. If this, I wouldn't have known the difference if this was store-bought or homemade. Yeah. If you, you want to hire thank us, you. we're professional uh, <laughs> taste testers. And if you want to hire us, just please ask Marianne for my number. <laughs> and I'm 53, single, and adventurous. He likes long walks on the beach. <laughs> I like long walks on the beach. So which cheese did you find had the best flavor? I like number five the best. I, like I also the, like number five the best. I like best. number two. It's uh, interesting that we all have different favorites, but it's like your soulmate. I think everyone has a cheese soulmate, same as you do for marriage. You have to yeah. pick your cheese and it's different for everyone. Which cheese... Was your favorite, and did you both agree on the same one? No. No. Not at all. My favorite cheese was uh, number one. It's got like a medium firmness, and it's very smooth in the mouth. It's got a nice even taste, and uh, mild aroma, and uh, yeah, it's a nice cheese. Okay, and what about you, Sheila? Which was your favorite? Mm, I love number five. I I love the texture of it. I would eat that just on its own without anything. I really loved it. And um, I guess because it's it's hard, a bit like a Parmesan, I feel like it's the kind of cheese you can grate on food, you know? And I love it because of that. I But I really did love the texture. Mm -hmm. I would buy it in the store. So all of the judges have now come and gone, and I have had a chance to look at the results and tally the scores. And of course, I judged the cheeses myself too, and I added my own preferences into the tally. I looked both at which cheese was voted as the favorite and which cheeses were voted as the lesser favorites. And I also calculated what my son taught me as the weighted average to rank these cheeses in order of favorite to least favorite. Here are some observations about the results, starting with myself. My favorite cheese was cheese number three, which surprised me because it has been a very stinky cheese these last few months. And I thought that that would make this cheese less palatable, but it was the opposite. The smell of the rind was what I didn't like. Yet once the rind was removed, the cheese itself was full of flavor. I loved the pliable texture of cheese number three as well. My least favorite was cheese number five. I found it to be too hard, almost like a Parmesan, and I did not appreciate that texture, even though some others loved this cheese. Cheese number five was so much older than all the other cheeses, two years older, in fact. So I suspect that age affected its flavor and texture quite a bit. Here are some general observations after tallying up the scores. An equal number of people voted cheese number five and number three as their favorites. But once I added my own results into the tally, it tipped the scale in favor of cheese number three being the winner, but not by much. Cheese number three got the most votes with cheese number five a very, very close second. It was surprising to me that even though number three and number five were a lot of people's favorites, those very same cheeses were still voted as their least favorite for some other people. And only one person voted cheese number two as the worst. So cheese number two really was in the middle of the ranking. It wasn't the favorite and wasn't the worst. Cheese number one, on the other hand, was voted the least favorite by the majority. So what can I conclude from all of this? Well, of course, people have different tastes, don't they? Not everybody likes the same thing. That makes it hard in cheese making, doesn't it? I think that when I make Swiss cheeses at home again in the future, I will probably follow the recipe for cheese number three, because I know I like it young at about three or four months. And that if I even age it longer, a year or two, I will still have a lot of people who will enjoy the cheese at that age. Stay tuned for a video on how I made cheese number three in the future.
Well, that was a lot of work. Making these cheeses months ago, aging them, having them judged, and then making this video. I'm really glad it's now over because now all I have to do is hang out, eat some cheese in front of my TV and relax. For Give Cheese a Chance, thanks so much for watching. I'm Marianne. Happy cheese making.